Get ready to dive into a world where empires stand on the brink of war and terrible monsters tear at the fragile borderlands of men. The Adventurer Conqueror King System Imperial Imprint, or as we like to call it, Axe 2, is now live on Kickstarter. Axe 2 is the new edition of the acclaimed best-selling fantasy role-playing game. You'll find everything you need to enjoy epic fantasy campaigns with a sweeping scope. Whether you want to crawl through dungeons, experiment with alchemy, crossbreed monsters, run a merchant emporium, raise an undead legion, or even conquer an empire, Axe 2 supports your playstyle. Axe 2 integrates experience point mechanics, making campaign activities a seamless part of the core gameplay loop. Your character levels up in new and exciting ways each time you play, adding massive replayability to each of your adventures. Axe 2 offers 18 character classes, 378 spells, new combat mechanics, and so much more. Support Axe 2 on Kickstarter today. And welcome to Knocked Prone, a podcast of high crits, small fits, and varying wits. My name is Cade, and I'm the host and dungeon master of this Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition adventure. And I am joined here by the players to my left. Mason playing Lakir. Brooklyn playing Litzy. Caden playing Torin. All right, awesome. So last we left our adventurers, they came back to the Awakened Trees and completed their quest but the trees reminded them that they needed a shepherd to take over. They ran into some gnolls that uh, were impersonating Blink, who is now Torin, and Torin set the record straight by flicking somebody into ash. They convinced the gnolls to uh, join them in the attack of Great Grumbopolis. Lakir had a dream of Vecna, the goddess of secrets, who told him to kill his familiar uh, in order to become his champion, and then travel eastward alone. And then Tess decided, after losing his eyesight from the sap that he was putting on his eyes to gain dark vision, decided to stay with the awakened trees to become their shepherd to cure them of their sickness. And we just left with Tess giving a very heartfelt message, telling them of how much he appreciated their friendship and how much he's going to miss them. But he's decided to stay. And as you could tell probably from our intro, uh, Danny is not here with us tonight. He is currently making a new character. So that's where we left off. Uh, you guys are sitting in this circle of trees with uh, while Tess just gave you the message that he is not coming back. What are you doing? Look here. We'll kind of just take a step back and... I'm so sorry. I I think this was this was my doing. I think I think I may have pushed him away. I I I, I need to leave. I I need to be alone. Um, will you both be all right without me for a bit? I can reconvene with you at a later juncture. I I think we'll be all right. But what happened? Um. Nothing. Uh, it's just I I did something that I don't think Tess would approve of, and I think he's mad at me. I need to make it right. Um. Well, we'll see you again in the future, right? Of course. Yes. Um. Yes. I'll just. I just have some things to do, and then I'll be happy to rejoin you. I I still need to take down my father. That is my number one priority above all. Well, hopefully you can resolve your issues um, quickly. Yes. Yes, yes, of course. Um, I'll, I'll be in touch and um, I'll kind of give a... I'll, I'll throw each of them one of my chaos gems in case you need them and I will be off. Okay. Good luck and I hope our, our paths uh, cross again shortly I'll kind of give him a hold out my hand for like a handshake and then he was well 
And I lean in and I do a man, the forearm handshake. Arr! Yes. <laughs> Lakir's grip is horribly weak, but <laughs> he returns it. Yeah, I can imagine your little elf hands yeah. trying to rip around the strength big dragon board. <laughs> <laughs> Native one to strength. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll head off into the woods. I will say, just as another small piece of information, um, Lakir probably would have been looking a little worse for wear, pale, um, probably not the most rested looking. So he's, he's a little worse for the wear right now. But When offered breakfast, did Lakir partake in any of the breakfast? Um, no, he would have just gone off. Food isn't really his priority at the moment. Gotcha. Okay. So you guys watch Lakir enter into the forest. He slowly walks away. Kind of, you can, you can tell that the lack of sleep and stress that is going over in Lakir's head is getting to him. Um, but he leaves you two, um, and you guys both have your mission uh, to return back to Adelina in the summer court. There's also an entire Feywild to explore, so really, the possibilities are endless. So what would you guys like to do? I feel like we were supposed to go meet back up with Adelina. Um, I thought she had mentioned that she wanted to wanted to uh, talk with us, so I think that's where I'm probably going to head in that direction. Um. Yes, I, I would agree. Uh, it feels a little bit directionless without having Tess and Lakir around, especially Lakir, Le- since he, um, I feel like, usually called the shots <laughs> in our group. But I think that that's definitely a clear next step. We might as well complete the mission that we um, came here for. So awesome. I'm going to eat some breakfast, Yeah, and then I'll be ready to head out. Okay. So you guys eat breakfast. You uh, put out the campfire. The trees that are surrounding you kind of, like, open back up um, after you guys are ready to leave. And um, they make sure that you guys, uh, you know, are fully able to be protected all through the night. Um, And with that, you guys are able to start heading southwest towards the summer courts. Uh, You were just on the cusp of the forest, kind of. And so you exit the forest as you leave, and um, you can see up ahead a a great big bog with trees in the bog, and um, you can hear the sound of a waterfall. And from the description that Adelina gave you, you expect this to be the summer court. Okay. Um, Can we see any humanoids around, you know, people, or like civilization so as you're kind of trying to look past this bog you see that the the bog that is surrounding this large island of land is actually has this magical waterfall that is flowing upwards that seems to be acting as a wall from outside people from entering into the summer court so if you were to walk through the waterfall you would you would be able to get into the summer court Okay, that idea that we have to pass through the waterfall to get there, I'm just going to approach it and and see what happens when I kind of step into it or step near it. Yeah, so you like are wading through this bog, kind of, you you feel a little bit of nervousness as you remember the last time you entered water, there were some creatures in it, but the water is warm, the air stops being this brisk autumn air as you enter through this bog and it starts to become like this summer heat but the bog of the the water that you are in allows you to kind of stay temperate and you feel really relaxed as you enter into the water and you approach the waterfall and it's just flowing upwards but as you reach your hand forward um, it seems to magically determine your intent and it opens to you okay I look back at Torin and I shrug and I like start to walk in, see if he follows me. Okay. Yeah, I definitely do. I just I just start <clears throat> trudging in, kind of turn my head sideways as I go through the water. All right. Awesome. And so the water lets you both in and you guys enter and you see this vast field. Now, field is the correct term for it because that's what it was before. But the field has been overtaken by various buildings made of uh, clockwork style houses that have gears that are interlocking with one another 
and um, there's various mechanisms and steam going everywhere. And there is, in the center of town, you see this large clock. And underneath this large clock is this ginormous glass of lemonade. And upon further inspection, everything is gray. You are not sure why everything is gray, but as you guys are looking around the town, both of you make me a perception check. Okay. 16. 12. So both of you are able to notice that Adelina kind of promised you dragonborns. Everyone here is human. Not just humanoid. Everyone here is human. And they are, they're like the most boring looking humans. Their hair is gray. Their skin is gray. Their clothing is gray. Just like the background. They almost blend into the background of this city. As you can see that life and color has been drained from them. They're not statues. They are just gray. That's so crazy. I did not expect it to look like that inside. I was expecting, like, literally the opposite, you know? <laughs> Color and... Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> um, okay. Uh, do I see Adelina anywhere? Is she anywhere in sight? Yes. So, as you're looking around, Adelina is frantically running back and forth from person to person and trying to, like, shake people. And she l- runs... Uh, back over to the center of the summer court and checks on the glass of lemonade until she spins on her heels and she makes eye contact with you, Torin. And as she sees you, Torin, she like hoofs it over to you and she goes, oh, "Thank goodness! I thought I thought everyone was. This is not how the summer court usually looks." I quickly like look down at myself to make sure that I'm not great. Yeah, you are not great. Okay. Is Adelina gray? Adelina is her typical dragonborn self. She has red scales with orange orange accents. Uh, she looks, again, very similar to Blink. However, um, last time you guys saw her, she had some orange hairs, like tufts of hair poking out of her scales. Um, and now more so, there are like nearly the entire right half of her body is covered in hair, like this orange hair. And she started to develop stripes in her scales, like these black stripes. And But she sees you guys, and she approaches you frantically, and is like, thank goodness you guys aren't changed. I thought, I thought everyone was going to be changed and different. Do I notice those differences with the hair and the, you know, all that kind of stuff? It's very obvious. Okay, I'm going to make a face, noticing that it's different. But I'm not going to say anything, because clearly we have bigger fish to fry <laughs> than her appearance. I'm sorry, how long has this been this way? The the town? Yes. Well, um, I went to the north, like I told you, to go campaign for this new democracy uh, in the northern courts as well as the autumnal courts, which then I delegated to you folk that you would help me out with the autumnal court, which we can get to that matter in a moment. But then as I returned home, this horrible horrible spell was placed on this town and everything is gray and i know that you don't know this but this can of lemonade this this big old glass of lemonade that that is the source of our wild magic connection and when i left it was nearly overflowing and now that i'm back and i was gone something happened and it's a quarter full at most i do not know what happened but something is going on Okay, I'm going to find the nearest wall and I'm going to run through it. And after I break through the wall, I'm going to say, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, um, I thought you were talking like in the library, how you like nine and three quarters that I was like, okay, you run oh, into yeah. a wall. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. No. Yeah. So you run through um, a wall and you uh, make this <laughs> well-timed comedic joke. Adelina smiles and then her smile quickly fades and she's like, Oh, Blink, you always knew how to get me to laugh. I'm going to walk over to her. I'm going to grab her by the shoulder, and I'm going to say, um, first of all, it's Torrid now. Torrid. And secondly, um, uh, what could possibly be going on here? Like, how can we help? Oh, um, well, Torrin, love the name, by the way. Is that for, from your dragon ancestry? It is, yes. Oh, wonderful. Well, uh, it suits you. Well, Torrin, your parents... Their surname is Embersand. They were of 
the first people here. They were the first to help to build most of this city. Um, and I am a bit younger than them, but I am not quite your age. There are no other young humans here. Like, everyone here is old. Okay. It's, and Adelina is also, like, older. Okay. But your parents, Torin, I told you you could see them when you got here. Uh, I kind of lied. Not, not in a terrible way. Uh, your parents are somewhat captured. I don't know if you know much about the issues that are going on here in the Feywild, but one of the biggest issues that the summer and fall courts have, or summer and spring courts have run into is that the hags that were here, the hags have always been trying to destroy us. And the winter and fall fey have been trying to align themselves with the hags in order to squash out us and the the fey that are not unseely. The seely fey. Okay. So, so where do you think his parents are? Well, in efforts to seal off the hags, one third of the dragonborn that lived here went to the south town, down towards the hags coven, and they were captured by the hags as, as a third of the dragonborn were sent south from the summer court the spring court also helped us out the spring court instead using their magic that they were able to harness from being so close to the wild magic maelstrom were able to erupt the earth and literally cause the earth to float in the air leaving nothing underneath but astral terrain that so that the the hags were captured in this the bottom half of the spring court whereas we in the summer court constructed a magical barrier to contain these hags but it came at the cost of one third of our people including your parents so you're telling me that his parents you knew that his parents weren't actually here in the summer court yes I was hopeful that maybe they would come back. It has been a while, though, that they've been there. Well, suddenly I'm not sure if I feel confident in supporting you in this democracy bit. Well, I I understand that this might be something that you hold up against me later, but I, I did not see it an opportune time to tell Torin that his parents were gone. And this is, I mean... Still not an opportune time, but I've learned that there will never be quite the opportune time to let you know, but your parents, the Ember Sands, are gone. Captured gone. Captured gone. Not <clears throat> dead. Okay. No. I, I believe that we could still save them. I was hoping that I could stay here and be able to try and help these people to ungrayify, maybe try and... I don't know, do something magical. This this seems like some sort of spell, does it not? Like, what turns an entire city gray and its people? It's too bad Lakir isn't here. He could cast Detect Magic as he always yep. does. Either, uh, either a spell or a curse or something that could alter the Feywild, you know, environment. But then, you know, there's also the lemonade that was drank that's supposedly like the power source of this place, right? Yes. Well, the, the lemonade was not per se drank, but has been siphoned out somehow. Mm. The It is continually draining. Um, I, I, I know not. Uh, it is magically sealed off from the top to not allow for people to drink from it because that is, well, it is our life source here in the Feywild. Well, it's a good thing that I care about Torn enough to want to find his parents and also in the meantime, maybe be able to get some answers for you um, and help you as well to retrieve some of your people. So if you're willing to stick around here and do your very best to investigate and try to solve the solution, then maybe me and Torin can go try to save his parents from being captured. I completely agree. And I, I do apologize. I, I just... I will have you know, Torin, that we have... The Dragonborn people have sacrificed a lot to get here where we are in this 
battle, this war that we are um, trying to face in order to become accepted here in the Feywild. Our people before us made a deal with, well, a lich (laughs) to discover a technology that would help us and to transport us here into the Feywild from the material plane. We did this in order to let us better work on finding a solution for the people of the material plane to keep them from making the same mistakes and sending the material plane into another mass war that was sure to be the destruction of all life if happened again. This lich promised us a safe entrance into the Feywild in exchange for, well, all of our young under 10 years old and all of their abilities to have children in the future. Now, not seeing another solution, the Dragonborn of the time made that great sacrifice. But your parents decided to quietly give you up to the druids of the material plane before the deal was made to shelter you from this terrible curse, Torin. So not only are you the last dragonborn to be born, but you are also the last hope for our kind. Well, it sounds like my parents were the only ones around here who made any sense. (laughs) Uh, Obviously, I'm kind of like mixed feelings between baffled and like angry that they would even make this deal they would even consider this deal and uh you know and also like understanding like my you know heritage and and about the dragonborn and everything so yeah so i'm just gonna be um you know kind of in a in a upset mood and say all right where do we start where do we go to to fix this or uh find my my parents and Um, Like, where should we start looking, would you think? Well, the only people that I would assume that hold a grudge against us this badly would be the hags that we've captured south. They were the only people that I could see that would be powerful enough to cast a spell that would affect the entire summer court. But these hags, they would love to try and turn us dragonborn into humans, as apparently they've mostly done because they believe humans are easier to manipulate. The hags, knowing that they were the ones that would have this vendetta against us, I think the only way that we could gain further information would be if you were to go to the south, to where the hag coven is, and try to reason with one of them to, well, see if there's any way to reverse this this curse on our land. Okay. Yeah, let's start there. Let's go. Let's waste uh, no more time and and uh, fix this mistake that it seems that they've uh, made for themselves, you know? Yeah. Yes, um, let's not delay. All right. Well, I hope to see you soon. I know I I don't mean to keep having our interactions be so short, I I assure you. Maybe next time we meet, we can um, have have a more welcoming interaction but until next time I do hope to see you again and she looks over at you Litzy and she uh, smirks and she says I noticed you admiring my fur this was a curse placed upon me from the giant people in order to stop me from being able to appease the election voters that they might see me as some sort of demonic looking abomination. Is it working? (laughs) And she smirks. When she says admiring I'm gonna like like choke a little bit hoping that it looks like I'm choking when I'm really trying to hold back a giggle. (laughs) (laughs) Um um, oh no I I, I think you look lovely. Um it only you could pull it off. Thank I you. think you could still earn vouchers. Well, if, if you deserve it. Well, orange is in season right now. She kind of chuckles as it's forever summer in the summer court. But she bids you both adieu, and she goes back to frantically 
um, talk, trying to talk to some of the humans, gaining no response from them. She pulls out like a spell book and starts flipping through pages and starts muttering something in Draconic to try and break this spell somehow with some sort of incantation to no avail. And um, you see her doing so as you guys both exit the summer court. Okay, well, we start marching south, which is an area we haven't been to yet, right? Like, this no. is going to be very new territory. I mean, I know the summer court was as well, but we're going in the opposite direction that we came. Is that right? Yes. Well, the op- it's the same direction that you're going. It's southwest. So you guys were going more due south before, but now you guys are kind of going diagonally southwest to try and get to the southwest corner of the world, which is where the hags have been sectioned off from the rest of the world okay and what do you guys talk about as you are making this journey it's about 30 minutes how long does it take for me to build a a cannon well at least for part of the walk i will be making that your eldritch cannon okay awesome and describe what it looks like i want this one to look kind of like a little dog okay A a little companion that can walk around yeah, you create this little dog cannon. Uh, it has its cannon is its mouth, so when it barks, it like shoots out its eldritch yes. invocation. Yeah. And Blink, what are you doing for this time? Gosh, I mean, I guess I'm sharpening my my claws and I'm oiling my flame blade and um, <laughs> just like really ready to just destroy whoever it is that's that's captured my uh, uh, my parents and expecting to like take no shit from these hags if if they aren't willing to give us this information you know so we just like walking next to each other silently <laughs> yeah I, I i we're walking in slow motion and i i cast fireball behind us explosion <laughs> and just, neither just of kidding. you look so you're obviously <laughs> cool yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and with that as you are marching towards your destination to find your parents and to help Torin find his parents. I think that's where we are going to end our session. My name is Cade, and I'm the host and dungeon master of this Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition adventure, and I'm joined here by the players to my left. Brooklyn playing Litzy. Caden playing Torin. All right, awesome. Now, go ahead and go and leave us a review on whatever listening device you are listening to us through. It really helps us get out into the uh, podcast reach so that more people can hear our content. And if you like our podcast, then go ahead and share us to a friend. I'm sure that they will also love talking to you about our content. And go ahead and check out our Patreon. Brooklyn, tell us about our Patreon. Oh, snap. So the Patreon just got a makeover. It's looking super dope. And there's some really new things. Very interactive. So if you want to be featured on our podcast for a short little while, if you want access to the DMs notes, like there's so many different things that you can get. So go check out our patreon that's patreon.com forward slash knocked again patreon.com forward slash knocked k-n-o-c-k-e-d there is a link in our bio of all of our social media so twitter tiktok instagram you can find it all all over there so awesome and kaden your band just dropped a new album go ahead and tell us about your band and tell us where they can listen to your music yeah so uh, <clears throat> i play a guitar in a band called palomir we're a, a metal core metal band from uh here in logan and uh we just dropped an album on let's see it was july 30th i believe we released it on all streaming platforms so you can find it on spotify amazon music pandora um our album's called all is low so go check it out and again that was a uh, palomir they're awesome yeah how do you spell palomir that's p-a-l-l-a-m-i-r Awesome. And we hope you remember that when life knocks you flat on your back, all you got to do is keep rolling. And we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.